Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another video. So in this video, I want to go over my passion project slash personal website slash desktop environment in the browser that I've talked about quite a few times on my channel called Daedal OS. I've uh, been working on it for over three years now and I keep adding stuff to it almost every day, it feels like. Uh, although there's been some slowdowns and some speed ups, it really depends on the week. Uh, but I've done quite a few things in the last like month or so since the last video and wanted to show everybody uh, what I've done. So let's just jump right in. For anyone who wants to check it out, it's dustinbrett.com. And the source code for the project is uh, on GitHub called Datal OS. You can check it out there. And when you go there, it just looks like this. Uh, basically, it's supposed to look pretty much like Windows 10-ish, kind of. Uh, and that's what I've tried to copy for the most part. And at the pixel level, basically, just like uh, every little detail I could. And still, even weekly, I'll, I'll find one thing where it's like, hey, that's one pixel off, and then I'll change it kind of thing. Um, so let's get into the first thing, talking about cool effects that I've done to try to copy windows. There was one where if we'll open up here and I'm just going to hover here. If you see when I hover over the start menu that I open, how there's this little, like where the cursor is, it's a little lighter. I call that the spotlight effect. And I've recently done a lot of improvements to it before it used to have a border all the time around these, when you hovered over them. Now the border kind of stays where your cursor is. And one really cool effect is if you see, when I get close to the sidebar here, the thing on the left it'll actually start to hover, start to highlight the borders there. And then when you hover open the sidebar, you can see that it's also kind of doing that effect as well. So I've made the effect a lot more uh, close to how Windows is by actually having a mouse uh, event listener on the mouse. And when, when you move the mouse, check the mouse location. And if it's close to these special elements that should have the effect, essentially they light up based on where the cursor is. And I also, you can see it even better on the calendar here. So it looks pretty cool in the calendar where if you go over the the different um, days, then you can see the spotlight effect better. And it actually works even outside the calendar. The hover effect is, is on the entire window. So even if I'm not hovering over this object, it can kind of detect it, even when you're like down here, which is how it is in Windows. So I wanted to try to get that right. Um, next thing I've added, which has been like a long time, is RSS support. So basically, if you just go dustinbrett.com forward slash rss.xml, you'll see there's this RSS feed. Um, I don't personally use RSS, which is why it took so long to add it, but apparently a lot of people still use it. So whenever I do any new blog posts, it will scan and update that RSS file basically with uh, my blog posts. Uh, the last one I did was not too long ago and you can open it here on the desktop. This was from November. Yeah, not too long ago. I have different pictures and stuff and you can click and open them. You can click links and open them in my cool little browser. And maybe that's actually a good jump to jump to the browser because I've done some features in the browser. Um, so one cool one that I've done, if you see here in the little shortcut art bar I have, uh, last time I showed a video about the dyno run, this time I've added something like called directory indexing is what I call it. And if you click it here, it's basically like how it used to be if you had an Apache web server and you host files on there. I've basically got it to link into the real, the real file system. So these actually will show an update based on things that are happening. And if you click them, it'll actually open them. So if you click screenshot here, it'll open like that instead of opening in the browser. And you can go users, public, uh, desktop. And you can see here, that's the real desktop. So if I were to like make a file on this desktop, new file, and now if I refresh, oh, you see there it is right there. It actually made the thing too big here. So it was a long name. Uh, and then you can click it right there and open it and you can edit it You can say hello and control save that. If I close it and then open on the desktop, you see it retained that information. And it's uh, now it shows here that it's five kilobytes or five bytes, I guess because it's five letters. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a cool feature, the directory indexing. And as part of that on this little icon bar, I've also added where you can do right click and you can open a new window. So you can open multiple. Uh, you can also do the browser inception, inception where you got uh, it open here. And that's the same file here that you can see with the hello. Uh, another one I have is if you hold control, you can click it and have it open. So I could uh, open up a bunch of dino games if I wanted and play multiple dino games. If for some reason I was so inclined to. Um, and finally, in regards to like file history, now if you right click on the back or forward buttons, you'll see it'll actually tr keep track of the history and you can just jump to a specific part of the history. So that's kind of how the browser works and that's what I wanted to copy with, uh, with mine. Uh, let's do a reset here to kind of get a fresh slate and see the next feature. So the next feature I have, if you open up the video player, uh, let's do when I was in Bollywood. Yes, I, I was in Bollywood, actually, in a, in a Bollywood movie. Uh, so if you hover over the taskbar, you see now uh, when you hover over the item, I always had this little peak where it'll preview the, the video as well. And I've actually added controls too. So you can pause it 
and you can press play on it again. So that's kind of cool. And this even works for the YouTube ones, which is kind of neat because the YouTube ones are harder. Like, so if I hover over here, I don't think I get the preview. Yeah, I can't look at the YouTube frame here, but I still can control the media. So I could still pause the video and play it again, which is kind of neat. So I've added media controls there on peak. Um, now going into the terminal here, if we right click on the, de the, there's a few ways to open the terminal. You could right click on the desktop and say open terminal here, or you could press shift F10 to open a terminal, or you could right click on the start menu and go terminal, or you could right click on the start menu to go run and type like CMD or terminal. I have various uh, ones for it. So once you're in the terminal, there's two things I've added recently. Uh, I already had an x86 emulator called Virtual x86, and this can do any kind of ISOs and things like that. Uh, right now, it has nothing to boot because I just open it without any uh, thing to, any bootable devices. But if I close it here, and in the terminal, if I were to launch Linux, I type, it'll actually launch in the x86 uh, emulator a version of Linux. And this is a pretty powerful version of Linux that has internet through web sockets, and it's even connected to the file system. So you see here, it's the same file system that I have uh, here. So that's kind of a cool little interconnect it has. Uh, that's one piece. And then another thing I've added in the terminal as well is a JavaScript uh, runtime called QuickJS. So you can say QJS one plus one, and it'll actually give you the answer too uh, in, a, in a separate JavaScript engine, not connected to the browser using something called QuickJS, which is uh, from a uh, Bellard uh, Labs, uh, Fabricio Bellard, a uh, very cool guy that has written a lot of interesting stuff. There's the RSS feed. So that's, yeah, that's the other feature. I don't know what you can do with that, but it's the same that I have Python too. So you can do, you can use Python or JavaScript uh, runtimes in here that are separate from the browser, which is kind of neat. Uh, and then finally, I, I guess I say finally, like I've done a million little visual tweaks as well. I'm always tweaking it, getting the start menu more accurate and uh, just, Anytime I, I can do tweaks. So there's in the last like month and a half, I've done so many little pixel level tweaks to just try to get everything right. Uh, but finally, one other thing I added is uh, support for high efficiency image file format. These HF or HEF and HEC files. And I can drag one here from my desktop. If I just, from my real Windows desktop, I've got my cursor and I'll drag it. And then I drop it in here. And then you see it just appears wherever I dropped it. And I've actually got a few features for that. I've got a clipboard support as well. So you could from your OS go control C and then in my web page, just do control V and it'll pull it right in. Um, so as you see here, when I dragged it in, it automatically creates the thumbnail for it. Uh, so it's able to read the image. And if I open it in the photo viewer, it'll decode it again here in the photo viewer. Uh, and I'm working on making it this more efficient. It's a little slow. It's not running in a web worker. It did the decoding work twice, which is not necessary. Um, but it's still, my web, whole website's a proof of concept in some ways. Uh, but there you go. So without having actual HE uh, or having support for this image format, which Windows doesn't even have by default, actually. Like you can't open these without getting an extension from the Windows Store. But you could just drag it onto my website and just open it if you wanted to just see the image. And it's, uh, it's the real image. There's a lot of data in that image, actually. I think that's a big file. Uh, I've actually got property support here. Yeah, it's two megabytes. And I've got details too, where it'll actually check the information on the file. So it's able to read the that this is uh, indeed that format. Um, so yeah, that's just a taste of what my website can do. Uh, please check it out, check out my other videos. Uh, feel free to like this video if you like it and uh, subscribe to my channel to support me because I'm, I'm gonna keep working on this for a long time and I hope uh, to keep building it and making people kind of go, wow, like this, a website can do all this. Uh, that's my hope. So whenever I, I get those kind of comments, I'm always like, yeah, I'm doing something right. So <laughs> thanks and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.